Downs to get 10 yards. You know, we'll, we'll keep track of who won offense or defense. Uh, we'll have what we call the spider drill. We got that O-line, D-lineman at one level, and linebacker, fullback at the next level, and a DB and a receiver at the next level. And we'll blow the whistle, and everybody starts blocking and trying to get off a block, and that runner tries to get through the gauntlet. And uh, we'll keep track of that. When we do inside drill, when we do a 11 on 11, a goal line to finish, to finish the day with our pads, you know, we'll keep score of what happens because we want these guys to learn how to compete. We want them to win. We want them to be fierce competitors. And uh, that's very important uh, when you're trying to win in, in our league, that's for sure, or any league for that matter. So it's so important that we learn how to compete. But the one thing that we do that I think is so important uh, after practice is we all come together and we'll always get a break together as a team. And they'll say team or they'll say family or whatever it might be. And, and I always keep reminding them that, you know, even though when we're between the lines, especially in the spring, we may compete against each other at the end. We're, we're one team. You know, we're, we're, we're together. We're unified. And another thing we do to try to create unity in our team is to uh, we set up our locker room in such a way that we, we go numerically. We don't go by position. We don't have the DBs over here and the wide receivers over there. We don't have the running backs over here and the linebackers over there. We might have number one is Muhammad Massaquah. Number two is Asher Allen. Well, Muhammad is a receiver. Asher Allen is a defensive back and so on. It goes just like that all around the locker. I mean, when you get to the big numbers, you know, you get the offensive line and the defensive line hanging out in the same area. So they, in the end, they can become friends again and learn to live with each other again. Uh, because what happens sometimes in the spring is uh, once you battle each other in practice, if you go back to that locker room and, uh, and you stay um, offense versus defense, so to speak, you might have some division among your team. And you can't afford to have division among your team if you want to have success. Um, you know, I've always believed that leadership is one of the most important things that you can have on a team, and there's no question about that. Um, you, you got to have leadership from the top, you know, from the coaching staff, the head, the head coach, the assistant coaches, on through the team. But it's it's really most important if you have leadership within the ranks, if you have leadership among the, the players. And one of the things, men, that's so important is uh, the players. If they're going to be true leaders of their football team, they must buy in to what the coach says. The only time you have cha a chance for true success is if everybody buys in to what the coaching staff is saying, when the coaching staff buys into what the head man is saying. Because if you don't, you have no you have no prayer of success. You'll have a limited amount, but you will not you will not succeed in the long run. And uh, just looking back on this season, uh, you know we had a year we started out five and zero, and we were number seven in the United States and. We actually were ahead of uh, Tennessee, 24-3 or something like that, to start the ball game. And uh, before you know it, the game was over, and they had routed us in the second half. And uh, things definitely didn't go very well that day. And then we end up losing to Vanderbilt and Kentucky, um, along with Florida. Lost four out of five games. And all of a sudden, we're a little way out of the rankings. No one is really even paying attention to us across the nation. And, uh, you know, a lot of people outside the program were saying that Georgia was finished, that Georgia had uh, lost it. They didn't, they didn't have it anymore, and they, they, they were not capable of winning. And um, the one thing that became even more important than leadership was, uni was unity. We stayed, we stayed together. We never, had, you know, sometimes when things aren't going real well, you might have to have a little meeting where the, where the players say, hey, I just want us and not the coach and all that. We're going to get everything straightened out because we got some things we got to fix and get better midseason. And, and sometimes those meetings are very valuable, but uh, we never had to have one of those meetings. We, we never had a time when coaches were pointing fingers at other coaches or where players were pointing fingers at another player, where the offense was pointing fingers at the defense or the defense was pointing fingers at the special teams or, or the players were looking at the coaches like, y'all are crazy. The players or the coaches were pointing the fingers at the players saying that you guys aren't getting it done. You know, the thing that we did that I was most proud of last season is we stayed together. We stayed unified. And what you learn when you're going through adversity is you
you don't just all of a sudden get yourself in that position and then um, uh, begin to build unity. That doesn't happen. It either, is, it either exists or it doesn't. And what we found is that we had worked so hard at staying together, at being unified, at always finishing uh, strong together, always working hard together, competing together. Everything we do, we do together. And uh, because of that, we had enough strength to um, kind of uh, survive the, the barrage of negativism that was out there, whether it was the media, whether it was certain fans, uh, we didn't like the way things were going. And, and because of that, uh, we were able to finish the season where we had actually, we were out there, we played Auburn number five, Auburn beat them at Auburn, no one thought we were gonna beat Auburn. I can promise you, Auburn didn't think we were gonna beat Auburn. Uh, as we uh, spent time talking to the coaches before the game, you could just tell it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't about how it wasn't about if they were going to win or not. It was about how bad they were going to thrash us that day. And, and, and I, I believe that they were probably going to thrash us too. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, we were able to win that game. And we never, we never could have won that game unless we stayed together. If we would have, if we'd have broken apart, if we would have frayed, uh, there was no chance that we would have had to win that game. And then we came and, and played uh, Georgia Tech at home and had a very, very rough start and found a way to win the game at the end. And, of course, in the bowl game, against Virginia Tech, uh, of course we were down, I don't know what it was, 21 to three or whatever it was, it was the, the furthest we had been down in any ball game and came back and won against a great football team. And somehow we came back and we won that game. And, uh, and it, had to, uh, it had mainly to do with leadership and the fact that we refused uh, to fall apart as a football team. And, um, and that's, that's what makes uh, Again, that made me probably more proud than anything else that had happened. The last time that Georgia had lost to Vanderbilt, Kentucky, the same year was um, like 1973. That's the last time that had happened. And uh, but in 1973, believe it or not, Georgia finished with a win over Auburn, a win over Georgia Tech, and a win in the in the Peach Bowl, which this year was the Chick Fil A Bowl. They went bang, bang, bang to finish the year. And I told the guys that before the game, before. We played Auburn, and they were looking at it like I was making up, making it up. But sure enough, it was in that media guy that it happened that way, and they and they they believed that we got it done. And the reason why I'm telling this story is because um, I, I know that uh, Valdosta has got a tremendous program and has had a tremendous program for years and years. And, and I know this man right here, Coach Tomlin, uh, he's a very good friend of mine, and he's a he's a guy that I have the ultimate respect for. I mean, the, the characteristics that were described by Coach Hyder, uh, Coach Tomlin has those very same characteristics. And, and I know uh, that th he is building a program for the long haul. He is doing the things right that will last for a long, long time. There's a lot of coaches that can come in and raise a lot of heck and get things rolling. And uh, before you know, within about two or three years, they got to leave town because they've burned every bridge that, that could be burnt, you know? And uh, that's true. You, you, you look at some of the coaches across the, the college ranks. You 